text for our sermon today comes to us from the epistle of St. James. Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial, for when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, and he himself tempts no one. But each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. Then desire, when it has conceived, gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is fully grown, brings forth death. Do not be deceived, my beloved brothers. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. Of his own will he brought us forth by the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Trials and temptations. These words are what we as Christians use to describe the life we know and, and how we experience it. They're really kind of a cliche for our view of the world. Now sometimes gatherings of Christians become, for lack of a better term, pity parties. As we each share our trials and our temptations of this life, those trials might be issues with our health, issues with relationships, with money, with food, so on and so forth. We're happy to talk about all of these trials, but when it comes to the temptations, lest we expose the ugliness within, we keep quiet about those. But every one of us has temptations that prey, some more than others, in one way, in others. But is this really how James deals with the subject of trials and temptations? Does he invite us to come and have our own pity party to bring our wines, and he brings his cheese. Hardly. He, he doesn't come at them as a negative, not as something that drags you down, but quite the opposite, actually. He talks about the only answer to trials and temptations. The only answer being God and what he does in the midst of our trials and our temptations. And James reminds us that the giver of every good and perfect gift, that God is on our side, even in trial, and especially in temptation. And that, brothers and sisters, that makes a difference. It sounds hard to believe, but James begins his letter by saying, Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds, for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. Now think back to those dark times, those trials that you have endured. If you're like me, you're tempted to wonder, what did I do to, to make it through? How did I survive? And that's really the wrong question. Because when I sit and try to think about what I did to make it through the trials, I come up empty. I can't remember what it was that I did to get through this. Rather, what did God do to help you through it? And that's the right question. Because it's only by His grace and mercy that we endure and are delivered. But joy? Really, James? I wouldn't have called it that at the time. That's really what James is saying. 
And that's what he says in verse 12 also. He says, Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial. For when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. You see, God uses these trials to strengthen our faith. Very few Christians seem to get stronger during times that are easy. The tough times, tough times move us. They move us one way or the other. Off into the wilderness of our own sin, into that pity party, into that wallowing of self-reliance. Or they drive us to God. They drive us to flee to Him. To cling to Him. And we see His hand. We experience God keeping His promises as He sustains us in these trials. God is the giver of every good and every perfect gift. And this includes His ability to take the trials that we suffer in this world and to use them to good, to use them to strengthen our faith in Him and in His dear Son, Jesus. You see, Jesus knows all about trials. From having nowhere to lay His head, to His arrest, to the trial, that mock trial, the beatings, the scorn, the nailing, the crown of thorns, the spear in His side. He knows. He suffered trials beyond any that we could imagine. And yet, he always had his eye on the Heavenly Father to sustain him during the very trials that God ordained him to suffer in order that he would save us. And in perfect obedience to his Father, Jesus suffered all. And all the while, he had perfect faith in his Father and in the plan of our salvation. In our times of trial, he is there, knowing exactly what we're going through. Not only empathizing, but sympathizing with us. He does more, in fact, than sympathize. He is the one who gives us strength. He strengthens our faith throughout it all. And he's the one who will bring us through the trials of this life and give us life everlasting. The crown of life is yours because our dear Savior suffered the trials of Calvary for you, for me, for all people. And so the next time that a trial comes, remember your Savior. And when you wonder where God is when you're suffering, look to the cross. Here is, is God's own Son suffering with you. There to give you His comfort, His understanding, His power, and to give you His victory. So go to Him. Go to His Word. He speaks to you. Go to His table. Take and eat His body and His blood. You are strengthened. But what about temptation? How is temptation a positive? Well, to be sure, temptations are not God's fault. And certainly our falling into temptation is not God's fault. Sure, we'd like to blame Him. We'd always like to point our finger and say, it was her, it was the serpent, it was them, it was everyone else except us. He's the one that created us. He gave us these passions and desires in the first place. Whether that is the passion for, for sex, for hunger, 
for whatever our passions are. Yes, He gave us these desires. But He didn't create these desires to be abused by us. That came later. And whether we like it or not, we can't blame God for temptation or even for our falling into temptation. James makes it clear that we look no further than ourselves for this problem. But each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. Then desire, when it has conceived, gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is fully grown, brings forth death. Each person is tempted. Tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. And temptation is all around us. As God warned Cain, temptation is always crouching at the door. Its desire is for you. And so we struggle. We feel guilty and we fall into it. We make up our minds to defeat it and we say no more. But when we rely on ourselves, we can't. We won't. We fall. We fail. We fail when we trust in ourselves. But God comes to the rescue. He brings us good and perfect gifts. He brings us His Word. The word of truth. The word of the gospel. And the gospel tells us that God gave us the best, good, and most perfect gift. The gift of His Son. And Jesus knows what trial is. And Jesus knows temptation. Not only was He tempted by Satan, as we heard in the gospel, he was tempted even more than that. In fact, his greatest temptation was to avoid the cross, not to go to the cross, not to save you and me, not to suffer those trials that he faced. He was tempted not to suffer and die for you and me, but he overcame. He overcame that temptation with his bloody sweat, with his tears with his prayers. And so he went to that cross. He went there for you and for me to pay for all the times that we fall into temptation. He is the only one who can defeat temptation for us. You see, we are his children. His first fruits, as James says. And we have been born from above in our baptisms. We belong to God. We are His special possession. And He loves us. He sent His Son to die for us. And we have forgiveness. We have forgiveness for all those times that we've fallen into temptation. And we receive the crown of life in Jesus Christ. We receive heaven itself. We receive the power that we need to go through this world of trials and temptations. And here's what he's doing. He's feeding you with his word. His word that sustains you. His word that reminds you. And he strengthens you in his promises. In the promise of his constant presence. His sympathy. His understanding for all that you're going through. He knows because he's been there. And his victory, his victory is yours. He gives it to you. Even if you fail, he will pick you up. He picks you up. He forgives you. He prepares you by the power of his word to strengthen your faith for the next time that temptation is prowling past the doorstep. He does the same thing through His Supper. He's feeding you, strengthening you with Himself, with His true body and 
his most precious blood that suffered, was given and shed for you. He strengthens your faith. He forgives your sins. And he gives you the crown of life. God knows. God knows about trials and temptations. He sent his only son to suffer them. To suffer them as we do. To know them as we do. He sent his son to give you all you need. So that in him you may come through these trials. These temptations of this world. And receive the crown of life from Jesus' own hand crown that he has earned for you at the cross and at the empty tomb. Amen. And may the peace of God which passes all understanding guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus.